Hi. <laughs> Hi everyone. Hi. Happy Friday. How are you? Yes. Woohoo. Happy Friday. Hello, hello. Finally. Hi everyone. Um, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, you are tuning into your Friday habit, uh, all about Athena. We are on our 16th episode. Oh my <laughs> Can you gosh. believe it? <laughs> We've been doing this for 16 episodes now. So uh, thank you very much for Great tuning job, in. You guys. <laughs> Thanks, chat. So um, if you if you're new to this podcast, uh, it's called All About Athena. And we're live every Friday at 8 p.m. Uh, my name is Marga. I have my co-host here, Pat. Uh, he's been my lovely co-host for 15, ep- for 15 past episodes. And we are on our 16th episode now. And we have a very special guest tonight, uh, Cha. Hi. Hello, Cha. So if you, if you have been tuning in to our episodes, Cha may be a very familiar face. Uh, yeah. She actually starred, <laughs> starred, guested on our seventh episode uh, a, a few, yeah, a few weeks back. And uh, yep. tonight, uh, she will be talking about a few other things uh, with regards to her experience with Athena so far. But before we dive into that, um, how are you guys? I know it's Friday. Um, I yeah. know Sha, it's the start of your sh- well, your shift hasn't started yet uh, for your <laughs> client. So how how's how's your week been, Pat? I know that we talk a lot, but <laughs> I haven't really um, seen your face <laughs> this week. So hello, hello. I missed you guys. I know, um, Mark. Uh, okay, let's just start with you, chat. So, <laughs> so how are you? How's your Friday? How's your week? Um, you know, it has started to be really fast-paced for me. I'm not sure how to really describe my weeks now, but um, you know, I you can tell that you're enjoying what you're doing when you don't seem to notice how the weeks drag by anymore, right? So it's, yeah, I can't I believe can. it's Friday <laughs> right now. I felt like two days ago was just Monday, the start of um, the week. So um, I don't know. Um, everything's like just happening real quick just for me. Quick, quick, right? <laughs> and then it's going to be Monday again, uh, the happiest day I know. for us in the I know. So, Yeah, yeah I, t- I can totally relate to the feeling because... Um, Okay, Marga's back. Hello. Yeah, <laughs> so you you to share. It might happen from my time tonight. I'm so sorry, guys. Uh, in advance, uh, wow. I'm, I'm having some technical difficulties on my end, but don't let me interrupt the discussion. <laughs> Please continue <laughs> without me. Yes. So, yeah, I was just about to share, Marga. Like, um, this week, it's just so, uh, I don't know, I can't really explain, like, how quick. <laughs> Because um, I, I thought that it's just Thursday today without knowing that we have a podcast tonight. So that, <laughs> there's just like a lot, super exciting, like things that are happening within recruitment in Athena. Um, you know, despite like the, the issues with our ISP Marga like, this week, right? I mean, we started really, it, it's just so rough, like at the start of the week, but Still, we're fighting, surviving. <laughs> At least we're, we have jobs, right? So, yep. um, sorry. So, um, Cha, uh, earlier, like Marga mentioned that, um, you know, you know, it's been like a month for you since you got uh, hired. Is that correct? Um, well, I started last January 11, but as a trainee, mm-hmm. so it's been a month. For me, since I've been matched with clients, since I became a full fledged mm. EA, so, uh, but it's like more than a month. So, I think I'm turning two months old with Athena <laughs> next week, <laughs> next Thursday. So, yeah. Congratulations! <laughs> so, so just for this, for the sake of the new viewers, uh, if this is your first time tuning into all about Athena, Cha is one of our new BEAs here at Athena, and she actually um, was our guest in one of our previous episodes, uh, episode, episode seven, seven um, yep. in particular. Mm-hmm. So, if you're interested to 
you know, uh, see more of Chai, you can actually rewatch episode seven after <laughs> this episode. Um, in episode seven, she talked about her application journey as well mm-hmm. as an applicant here at Athena and how successful she was with each stage and, you know, from, from application to the job offer. And now mm-hmm. that she's two to three months old here <laughs> old. in Tina, <laughs> we we want to we wanted to sort of check up on her um, on how she's doing so far, just to also give you a sneak peek, like a, a first person point of view of how it is for a new BEA here mm-hmm. in Tina. So maybe Cha, I know that you started uh, January, I believe, with the training. <laughs> And now that you're actually working with your client, um, it's it's been uh, it's been a long journey, even though it's been only like two to three months. But uh, maybe you can break it down for our viewers. Uh, maybe start mm-hmm. off with your. Um, I know that there there are some things also like before training um, mm-hmm. on the onboarding mm-hmm. packet that you're you're sent uh, via email, and then some things that you actually need to do. Um, prior to training. So maybe we can start off with that, progress the training, and then we can go from there. Okay, sure. But, wow, that feels like a long time ago now. <laughs> Although, um, I'll try to uh, recap for, for those who are aspiring to be uh, with us here in Athena. So um, first week, week before training we were sent that onboarding packet for everything that we'll uh, be needing to 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 use and prepare um in training so that mm-hmm. has um everything that will set us up you know time keeping wise and um tools wise email zoom that we can use you know all the basic stuff that you'd need when um coming into uh, training for any <laughs> any team or any company. So, um, which was how um, I remember it as just being a single document or maybe mm-hmm. a, an email or two for instructions, but everything was there already. So, um, I didn't even. Um, there's really no point at all when I felt confused and mm-hmm. anxious. Um, Instead, um, coming into a new company, uh, training, right? It's normal for you to feel nervous and anxious, but there was less of that for me and more of excitement, really, because um, I know that I'm coming to a good place. There was no room for any worrying at all. So, you know, that, that single document prepared everything. So coming to training... Um, mm-hmm. I I had already set, I believe I conditioned myself enough to know and expect what I'll be um, experiencing in training. I already knew before uh, it started that it's going to be challenging for me. And yet mm-hmm. I was still quite overwhelmed at first. Um, what I loved about training is um, that we were prepared to... Just to, you know, just, sorry, <laughs> we were prepared with everything, yeah. every single task that we might get asked by the clients that will be matched. But even if um, those tasks won't be what our clients will be needing, we still had uh, guidelines and directions in the form of mm-hmm. Athena's core values. So what I loved most about training was how these values were incorporated into every single task that uh, tasks that we had to do. So even if, for example, the Athena way of um, organizing emails and inboxes aren't mm. what your clients would be needing as of the moment, you'd still have something to refer to when it comes to the next steps. So as long as right. I'm following the Athena values, mm. I'm good to go. I still have everything um, that would uh, I'd need to get me going. So that's what I love. Right. It's been about training so sorry sorry to cut you off chat but yep. um so be, before we move on like during like the first week i know that this is like your really first time to work remotely also right and yeah. how was the experience like this is your first training like remotely like a virtual environment work <laughs> environment how was it 
A part of why I struggled was because um, of that, working remotely mm. and um, the hours. <laughs> this mm, was also yeah. my very first role where I had to work in uh, Philippines graveyard hours. So I think um, I was when I started training, I had a lot of adjusting and catching up to mm. do when it comes to time management because I think I underestimated the amount of time I would be needing uh, in order to complete my assignments or homeworks yeah. and mm -hmm. uh, my sleep. So <laughs> while I was sorting uh, through all of that, I was feeling overwhelmed. I kept feeling like I don't have enough time. So. But that was during the first week of training. Yeah. So. Yeah. It was so how, did you, how did you deal with that? Like being, I know that being overwhelmed, Sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, with, with everything going on at the same time, you always think, oh, no, I don't have enough time. I'm, mm -hmm. you know, I need sleep. But at the same time, you can't sleep because you're thinking about all the things that you need to do. <laughs> so, so how did you how did you get through it? Because, you know, like, obviously, you passed training. And mm -hmm. from, from what I hear from the training team, um, you passed with, you know, flying colors. So flying colors. it didn't seem to me that you did were I overwhelmed really? at all. So I am curious, what what did you do to really deal with that, manage that feeling? I was fortunate to join a very lovely batch of <laughs> a, a training batch. Uh, you were all uh, lovely ladies there. And sort of, um, I just, I don't know, the mind that we had kind of related to each other at first i thought it was just me struggling with keeping mm -hmm. up with um you know the graveyard hours and all of the tasks that we had to accomplish but um once we found out that we're all experiencing the same thing um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. everything became easier plus we had a great uh training team with us we're all very nurturing and understanding so it eased a lot of pressure most of that pressure was um, that I had, that I felt were on the first maybe one or two days. But then yeah. after I met everyone and got to talk and chill with them, chat with them, uh, even during training hours, um, really helped. So mm -hmm. ease the nerves and all uh, the pressure that I had felt back then. So, yeah. Thank you, Cha. Um, we just want to highlight that so to 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 our viewers, right? So, um, Morgan, I always like say this, like it's not almost every episode, but we always say <laughs> that you really need to check, like, um, you know, check if this is something that you're really ready to take on, because, um, you know, there we we have a lot of applicants who has a work with BPOs and you know they've experienced like working graveyard shifts um you know really late night philippine hour shifts but it's it's totally different right Cha, if you're working from home and also like working graveyard because you can see like you're, if you're working outside your bedroom you can just see your bedroom like just you know, a few steps away and it's very, <laughs> it's very easy to laze around and you know it's very tempting to just you know just lay in your bed while working <laughs> and it's right. going to be hard for you to, to actually control like your, your sleepiness or feeling a bit lazy to to do your task so we, we just want to highlight that to to our potential um probably applicants that is something that you really need to uh, prepare for and um if you're just tuning in so <laughs> Sorry, I'm just going to squeeze that. We're watching all about it, Tina. And this is our 16th episode. And tonight we have Cha with us. So Cha is one of our new hires, uh, still a new hire, right? Almost like three months old. Um, yeah, in Athena. Newbie, newbie. And, um, uh, she also like joined us during our seventh episode. So if you want to have like a better understanding of um Chas journey um from her application, uh, uh her experiences um taking like the, the, the tests and the interview and all that the recruitment process for the EA role here in Athena, watch episode seven. And, you know, just go back to episode 16. <laughs> you still need to, <laughs> to check on some things. But, um, and if you're new to our page and um, probably not our channel because our, 
our YouTube is not yet really live. We're just waiting for YouTube to give us like a go signal to stream there. But we have our YouTube account also, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Just search Athena Careers PH. And um, soon we'll have our Spotify. So watch out for that. We'll also be uploading all of our past episodes in our Spotify account. Also, I will share like um, our playlists. Our Athena playlist that will help you through, you know, uh, while working from home, probably. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So, um, Sha, I'm just really curious. I, I like to highlight, um, you know, mm-hmm. the, the things that you were talking about, like the feelings that you've had uh, during, pre- well, pre-training and then during training. Because I think that mm-hmm. we don't really talk about it that much. Like being mm-hmm. anxious um, prior to, you know, joining training. And then when you're in training, of course, you want to do well, right? And that's really what drives you to worry <laughs> about all the things that you need to do. Because if you don't really care, you know, you don't care if, if you need to submit something, right? So yeah. I like that you you mentioned that you were overwhelmed and, you know, you were a bit anxious about how mm-hmm. to really adjust to the working yeah. schedule and if mm-hmm. you're if you're tuning in um we do get a lot of applications um from aspiring eas who you know are open to the idea of working again um at home during yeah. graveyard hours um but when they when they get into training they realize that oh no this is really a struggle and I, I I really appreciate Sha when you know when you mentioned that it's it wasn't just you, right? And you actually <laughs> found solace um with your fellow batchmates, knowing that it's not just you struggling with the adjustment to the graveyard hours, that you're actually struggling together. And that mm-hmm. actually um helped you. Uh that actually helped you with dealing with it. Um, knowing that you're not alone in that struggle, and so mm-hmm. we we wanted to. This is also the the point of this whole episode is to really get a real, you know, a real view of yes. what the, the real is deal. Like. <laughs> yeah, um, we we want to keep it real in a sense that we don't mm-hmm. want to hide behind, you know, all the things that we could market it as because we yeah. want to make sure that you're coming in. Um, you know, you're sending your applications, knowing the reality of this this role. This role yeah. is definitely not, you know, it's not a no-brainer role. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you're not going to survive if you're not going to use your brain. Um, it's definitely <laughs> a brain exercise every day yeah. um, with this with this EA role job. But at the same time, the the difficulties and the struggles that you have with it comes with a great reward because it yeah. is rewarding um it is a rewarding yeah. career and that's what we want to share with you know the 10,000 Filipinos that we want to hire um for Athena yeah. and so mm-hmm. it's really great cha, to hear that you know even though there was that overwhelming feeling and that struggle with graveyard shift that I don't think the training team <laughs> really <laughs> noticed that much um, because you carried yourself so well. Um, but, you know, it's it's also part of dealing with the training because, you know, new, mm-hmm. new company, new rules, new, you know, things to learn. So it's really great to hear that. And after the first week, I believe, um, comes the apprenticeship. Right, you're paired with a playbook pro, or what we, we call them playbook pros here. But if you're not familiar mm-hmm. with the with the term, um, it's a, it's an SME subject matter expert, like a tenured uh, EA who helps out our newbie EAs with mm-hmm. a lot of things. Yep. Oh, sorry. Hello, Ooh, we got Marga back. So yes, yes. So there, Cha. Uh, I was I was just wondering if you could tell me about the apprenticeship week, how how it was, what it like the difference from being in a classroom, virtual classroom <laughs> training to being in an apprenticeship already. No, so um, starting that week, we were <laughs> not sure if it was just me or my back training batchmate. Bra- sorry, or if my training batchmates also felt this with me, but. 
there was a kind of um separation anxiety from the class, <laughs> knowing that we'll have to all oh, we'll have to work individually for a week and we won't be in a class anymore. So, but even then, we kept on chatting with each other. How are you guys? Have you talked with your mock line um already and stuff? So, uh, um, also I. I don't really want to intimidate or scare the aspiring Athena EAs out there, but it, the training training is challenging because you'd have to squeeze everything that you have to learn in a short span of time. So imagine having just one or two weeks to learn everything that you need. And um, as someone like me who's who's very new to being an EA, um, mm. working the graveyard, graveyard hours, it was overwhelming, but it wasn't um, crazy hard or difficult, especially if you're really determined, if yeah, your determination and will will power you through training um, because um, you'd be able to, you know, um, overcome everything because um, you, you have to pass. There's no other choice. You want this job, and it's a very rewarding job. So that's the reason why it was challenging for me. But um, nothing was unreasonable. Nothing was unreasonably hard. It's just um, there was just a lot of things to learn. Anyway, yeah. coming into the second week, um, we were all excited to apply everything that we learned from class. So mm -hmm. um, some of the things didn't really happen as I was expecting them. You know. Um, People from the training team try to uh, provide you with as much reality as possible, right? But um, you cannot really go over that with a prepared script or prepared um, timeline of your own because it's even if it's just a mock client, it's still um, not everything will be under your control. So you were exposed to that environment. So we were um, given training and orientation and how mm -hmm. and what is the Athena way of doing specific EA tasks for example how does an Athena EA do calendars and emails and mm -hmm. um, how do they manage uh, traveling for, for their clients so we learned about that and we were excited to apply that but um, most of us were presented with a challenge of um, hey that's not actually what I need but mm -hmm. It, you know, um, we were presented with those challenges during the week with our mock clients. So that was another learning period for us. So um, what powered us through that week, I believe, would be sticking with the Athena core values. So even if um, you're not as prepared as mm -hmm. you think you are, you still have those core values. Uh, you know, um, basically, you just... As long as you're being proactive, as long as you're being, you know, as long as you're exhibiting high IQ, you'd, you'd, um, you'd have everything you need to accomplish the tasks that will be asked of you. So there, that's basically how the second week went. And we were able to close that with uh, the announcements of the results. So <laughs> that entire week was uh, nerve-wracking and then exciting mm -hmm. and then um, nerve-wracking some more. So that's <laughs> it seems like a, right. seems like a roller coaster. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it was yeah, exactly. nerve-wracking to exciting to nerve-wracking to exciting. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what was your biggest takeaway from um, mm. that apprenticeship week? Um, that you cannot really sorry you cannot really box in clients into one single profile yeah. so um in athena and this is also what i'm um, really thankful for when i joined the team they um they match you with 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 people and teams who have basically the same skill sets as as you do mm -hmm. um as much as possible right so if for example um you get together with your specific Playboy Pro team, it's because mm -hmm. you'll be having the same, you're, you'll most probably be having the same schedules and maybe mm -hmm. um, the client profiles are most like similar. So um, coming into that week, I realized that though the 
common profiles for Athena clients are start up, sea level um, mm -hmm. executives, right? There isn't really a single type for them. So yeah. <laughs> their needs will all be different as well. But exactly. um, mm -hmm. that's why you, aside from all the tasks that you learned, um, what you really have to always uh, with you and in you would be the core values. So I believe in, and then that's um, that training style for strategy is also very new to me, really ingraining what the company stands for into mm -hmm. every single task that we do is very refreshing and I think it's very effective too. So that's, I think, my key takeaway. As long as you exhibit those core values, you'll be great. <laughs> right. So th that's really nice to hear, Cha, because... Um, I don't know, uh, probably uh, our viewers are already like sick and tired of us, <laughs> of us, Margo, when we say that, you know, really think about it, like, really check like the, the job description before you even submit your application. Because um, uh, what Chai is saying that um, you cannot really um, just expect like a certain client to, to act the same way as the other clients, mm -hmm. like that, that really... Um, separates us from the, the different like uh, remote work that, that is available currently. So a lot of um, so some applicants might think that uh, uh, this is like executive assistant remote or work from home job. So this is very similar to virtual assistant. So um, I'm telling you it's not because, <laughs> because um, like what Cha said, um, she's currently doing like a lot of things for her client. And she's not just, you know, boxed into like one certain task. She's doing like a lot of things for her client or her client also needs like a lot of things for her. And it's just like not a single like road to take. Like it, there are like different branches in that particular road. That's why it felt like it's a roller coaster, right? Child, like during like your second week and your mock like clients, the, the playbook pros are giving you such or like putting you in a, a certain situation where a client is not satisfied with your output or, you know, that they have some questions or um, that they have some questions about your output and all that. So that is like the reality of it. Or is it very similar to what you've experienced, like from your second week of um, a mock uh, mm -hmm. client with the PPs to your experience with uh, your actual client? Mm, the my mock client the challenge that was presented to me by my mock client was that she she <laughs> shout out to playbook pro l <laughs> um she tried not to be very responsive and very mm -hmm. uh, you know available for communication so um always oh, struggled with that um i tried to be as accommodating and understanding really you know i um, trying my best to reach out even if we didn't get uh, much answers because that happens you're going to be working with people who are so busy mm -hmm. and is um, actually working with you so that they can get back even a little uh, bit of free time uh, that mm -hmm. you could give them so um, that's the challenge that she uh, gave me. So it's kind of different with my client now, fortunately. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that's how it was different. That's how um, um, you'll never know. Um, and it's it's different with my client now, but I'm not saying that um, I get responses all the time. They're still busy people, so we would have to know uh to adjust to to that yeah. to your client's time so, yeah. and we and you know speaking about your client like um how was the preparation in you know first mm -hmm. time meeting the client or prior to meeting the client you, you were prepped right um yeah. on how, what to do um so we just want to know like how what was the the process there or how did it how did that go Oh, um, we're back to the nerve-wracking times. <laughs> but for every step, I'm not sure um, if everyone goes through this the same way that I do because I'm just one of those people who tend to worry a lot. So uh, mm -hmm. please do not be intimidated of that. You'll be feeling the same way as I did uh, when you uh, also uh, go over your own training with Athena. But mm -hmm. um, for every step of the way, there's always someone who's going to uh, support you and make you feel like they have your back. 
So even then, I still felt a lot of anxiety, but I'm sorry about that. So to prepare us for our meeting with our client, um, we even had rehearsal calls and first mm-hmm. meeting um, preparations by our EA coaches. So we have trainers, right? We have wonderful mm-hmm. training team. And then you will be turned over to um, EA coaches. Mm. Uh, for, for the, I believe they're the onboarding team. Or I'm not sure how how <laughs> to manage to go with, with the um, teams at the team, but you have those. You have the training team, and then you have your coaches, and then you have playbook pros. So you have a lot of people um, preparing and helping and supporting you for for this, just for your very first meeting with your client, so that you can set the foundation for the partnership. Um, smoothly so it's just going to be a one hour call um, at most but a lot of steps to prepare you and ease your anxiety and worries and nervousness um, are there um, set by Vina so um, we have that in training we learned what the call flow would be like uh, we got to learn from um, videos and actual mm-hmm. call simulations. So we had that. And then we met with uh, EA coaches to who actually prepared um, the very agenda <laughs> for yes. us. So they, um, they met with our clients who will be matched with us and talked about the needs that they'll be um, at, the where, where they need our support with and they prepared everything that we need down to the very agenda um we weren't really encouraged to follow a script because that wouldn't sound natural and that isn't the goal there we they we all want for the first meeting to be as natural as possible as relaxed and as productive as possible so Everything, every step of the way was prepared for us to set up for success. So even until now, I've been uh, approaching my first month with my client and they're still there checking in on us and um, frequently asking how things have been and if we need any type of support from the team. So everything has just been helpful so far. I believe there's um, a question for Cha um, in the yep. comments. I, I was about to say, my <laughs> Um Yeah, this is coming from Anthony Martin Molina. So mm. what skills are required to be a, a VA? A VA? Um, wait. So <laughs> Anthony, um, what, what we're looking for are actually... Um, Executive assistants um, who will be working from home here in Athena. But um, uh, in terms of the skills, Cha, would you, do you mind like answering that question? <laughs> Sorry, that question is for me. <laughs> um, skills, I think you'd have to have a good foundation of mm-hmm. um, core communication skills. You're going to be working with. Um, clients who are not from the Philippines, so Mm -hmm. it wants to set up communication as your tool um, for uh, the partnership, right, for your working relationship, so that's a must. You have to have good communication skills, really strong foundation and background when it comes to the English language. Uh, Next, you have to be, um, I'm not sure... Just for me, I think you have to be on a little bit on the tech savvy side because working from home, we have a great security um, an IT team at Athena, but to troubleshoot for you, there isn't really anyone. So you'd have to know how to figure that out for yourself at least. Yep. And you'd have to be, you have to have good command of applications because to help uh, these people who are um, technically leaders and game changers of the world, you have to know how to maximize the tools to use for them, right? For, for everything that they need. So 
that and what else um you have to be relationship savvy it'd be we, we would build for the long term that's mm-hmm. the goal um you'd be met with challenges and hurdles along the way you might you know so you'd have to you have to have a good sense of how to keep a relationship going for the long term so i think top three that would be yep. it for me <laughs> sorry right but you're correct Uh, it's it's not just you but it's really like a must for you to uh be not um not like super tech savvy but um has a working knowledge in terms of troubleshooting because that's the reality of it i think in any like remote work you need that because you don't have your own like it team who's gonna come running and rescue you if like something goes wrong um like what marga and i experienced like we had some issues with our um just this week like we had some issues with our um, internet service provider so it's really like tough if you're in that kind of situation like if you're if you don't have like a working knowledge um tech knowledge um it's gonna be super Uh, challenging for you on how to overcome that, um, especially for working like graveyard. Um, although we have like other cases, are also like working with their clients. Um, mm-hmm. You can always like um, ask some questions in our Slack. I think we mentioned that for using that as a communication tool. But you know, um, you 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 need to be confident in in terms of your tech knowledge. Um, that's gonna help you. In, in the long run and i like what you said about relationships like um you need to be savvy about re- uh, building relationships and making making sure that that relationship will last so uh, and um sorry uh let's see sorry i kind of got lost <laughs> about the question sorry. but thank you Martin, for the question um i i hope um anthony were able to answer your question So um you know just to just to move on um chat earlier you were you were talking about your experience like during like the the uh, or the the yeah, week before, before me. your me uh, before you, before you meet your client so is there any like special things that you did uh, to prepare yourself on your own but, you know i understand that you've shared that you know there, there's the training team um we have um Isa, our coach <laughs> our mm-hmm. EA coach and how also helped you with um you know preparing you uh, before you meet the client but did, did you do anything like special on your own like just to prepare um, yourself i believe i watch um the video resources and materials that we have a lot of times um because that's your only uh, reference as how to the call would go so i tried to mm-hmm. map that and There wasn't any particular game plan uh, because it's the call is structured in a way um, for you and your client to be able to go over everything, uh, all of the details that you need to set the first day. Um, so there wasn't really much room for um, creativity coming up with. <laughs> No, icebreakers to introduce yourself to the client. So, um, if you wanted to do that, you have to do that maybe mm-hmm. after the first call with your client because they're busy people. Like what I've said earlier, so they might have only allotted an hour really for your first call. So you'd have to follow um, your plan when it comes to that first call at least. So I just watched. Yeah. All of the video resources and materials that we had, and reviewed all the notes and tips that the EA coaches and the trainers um, gave us. So, in terms of preparation, um, that's what I did. Thank you, Cha. And you know, I was speaking of your client. Like we heard that it's been going well so far. <laughs> on your client side um and would like to share like a snippet of the feedback we received from chess client and um let me just see let me just share that here so we're sharing this, um just so you know we, we want to be transparent about like what kind of feedback you would probably receive from a client here at athena um we always ask them um on our end like you know how is your ea doing what are the things that you you know you think that they want to improve on so i'm not sure uh chai if you've seen this before but this is a direct 
um, yep, yep. snippet from your client. And uh, when we read this for the first time, um, as recruiters, we were so proud of chat because it really validated all our assessments, all the, the process entirely because, you know, chat is really the type of person that we want to hire um, for this EA role. So if you're just tuning in and you want to apply for Athena and you're wondering, am I going to be able to make it for Athena, not just during the application process, but during the training, will I graduate? Will I mm-hmm. be, you know, will I eventually meet the client? Will I do well with the client? You can actually um, reach out to Cha. <laughs> um, you, can, you can reach out to Cha if you have any other questions that you'd like to ask her. Um, you know, if you have any um, hesitations or concerns about maybe um, some skills that you probably you're not that confident in, or you think that you want to improve on, maybe Cha can you know give you a little like shed more light on it on how to improve on those things. Um, and in that vein, uh, Cha, can you maybe share just the last few tips and advice to all our um, you know viewers? I think with um, I we have another question from the same person, Anthony. Uh, yep. Can there you we go. flash it here? So maybe we yeah. can answer this mm-hmm. question before we go to the, you know, lot closing tips and advice from chat. Final right tips. So what kind of help do you uh-huh. do they normally so, need? Like probably like, I think he's asking like particular requests, maybe. Uh, I think this is kind mm-hmm. of, this kind of work is what the future holds. And I feel I have the tools needed. Okay, gotcha. Mm-hmm. Typically, so what, what are they? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Go ahead, chat. Uh, uh, well, with the nature of fitness clients, uh, these are C level executives who would want to leverage um, time as best as mm-hmm. they can so that they can focus on um their game changing strategies and uh and ways to to um to contribute to to mm-hmm. the world so they normally need help with uh some of the things you know mundane like things managing for them. Their day. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. yes managing their day managing their emails organizing their inbox for them uh, they need to know where work is uh where they can find work that they need to do right away, you know. So if you could sort that out for them by really um, taking care of all the other distractions and other things, that would be very helpful for them. Um, you know, managing their meetings um, mm-hmm. and other personal tasks that would get in the way of work and whatever their goals are for really hiring an EA. So some clients would need a lot of help with with work. Some of them would need more help with um, sorting out their personal lives because that's where they're sort of out of touch, super hands-on with work, but then, you know, um, lacking personal touch when it comes to personal family matters. So it really depends on who you'll be working with. But most stuff, when it comes to tools, Think of all the productivity tools that are out there. For example, (laughs) in Athena, we love Asana, um, right? So as the task management, project management tool that we use, any email productivity Mm -hmm. tools that there is, superhuman uh, that you can think of, um, those are some of the tools that they need and they're a fan of. I hope that helps, and I hope that answers your question, Anthony. Thank you, Cha. Sorry, I just want to share, like, my personal fa- favorite currently is mm-hmm. Airtable. So I really love oh. Airtable. <laughs> really, <laughs> Pat? Saying, it, it's not a love-hate relationship anymore. <laughs> tell, no tell longer, like, truth. a love-hate. <laughs> it's no longer, like, a love-hate relationship. Okay. Like, it's a love-love um, now. Yeah, it's love-love love, love love relationship, relationship with Airtable now. <laughs> But yeah, thank you, Anthony, for your questions. But yeah, uh, going back to like the tips and advice, I know that we talked about like the 
whirlwind, the the <laughs> roller coaster uh, ride of emotions that you went through, um, you know, before you even started to now that you're working with your client. What kind of tips and mm-hmm. advice? I know that you've been giving a few already, but what other mm-hmm. tips and advice could you give them? Um, you know, coming into this role to really not just excel as an EA. But to to really get through each and every hurdle that's put in front of them, right? Because he mentioned mm-hmm. there were a lot of challenges for each <laughs> for each stage, and it's really about powering through them. But how 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 do you power through them? Um, for me, I think preparation really is key to everything. If you're if you're ever faced with a sudden <laughs> hurdle and um, that you have to overcome immediately, I believe there still would be room for you to prepare anything, even if it's just preparing your mind for the challenge that you're about to approach. So um, you always have to have a game plan for everything. If you're the type of person who has the natural ability to overcome challenges, then great for you. But if you're like us who are normal, <laughs> if you ever face any, if you face difficult challenges along your way um, into becoming an EA when it comes to specific tasks, you have to at least be able to map out how you're going to approach the task and then um, to stay calm, and if resourcefulness isn't um, one of your suit, it has to be. <laughs> so start knowing and learning about how to be resourceful and really maximizing all of your resources. Some people might think that they're already resource- resourceful, mm-hmm. but they're not yet aware of um, all the hacks and, and tricks out there to maximize maybe, I don't know, just doing Google searches. So if you're not yet resourceful, you have to be. If If you you have to always come up with a game plan in order to sort out your challenges and um you have to be true to yourself as well you have to learn where your limitations are what your limitations are to be able to address them so if you're still in denial about the things that you can and cannot do you have to sort that out first so for me those are top three most important things. You have to be resourceful. You have to um, take preparations seriously. Um, but if you have a natural <laughs> talent for, um, you know, coming up with solutions on the spot, really great for you. Happy you can share <laughs> that with us. And last thing is just um, know yourself well so that you also know how to improve your um, weaknesses and limitations. There. I, I, and I think we always say that, Margs, right? In, yes. in past episodes, like <laughs> you really need to be true to yourself, and you need to be honest. Also, like what you said, Shao, when you said that you need to be honest with yourself. Like if you know if you know your limitations, then you know don't overcompromise. Like if you, if you really don't know like mm-hmm. something, then you know it's okay to ask for help. And that you're very consistent with, you know, setting your, uh, or having like the right mindset. Um, it's very mm-hmm. similar to having like a game plan, right? So if you have a, if you're able to set your, your mind properly, you will able, you will be able to, to plan ahead. And also, um, being curious is one thing, but, you know, looking for or like exploring that curiosity is another. Like, um, you really need to be, um, resourceful in a way that nothing can really stop you from like looking for a possible <laughs> solution, like a new solution or a better solution right so um yeah if you're just new if you're just tuning in um we are all about athena and you're watching our 16th episode with with our um Athena, new EA newbie, <laughs> Cha. Um, and if you're wondering, like who Cha is, <laughs> she's one of our new EAs, and she just started like this year, January. Um, if you want to know like her experience, uh, her recruitment journey, or her journey in the recruitment process um, of being a, like an Athena EA, you can watch or rewatch um, episode, episode seven, seven. Of, our, uh, of our podcast, and. 
If you're new to our page, um, feel free to look us up via Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, and soon in Spotify. Um, just search Athena Careers PH. You can also watch our past episodes in YouTube, in YouTube and in Facebook. And um, you can submit, or if you're curious to know, like uh, the, the the other job openings that we have here in Athena, aside from the executive assistant position, we're also hiring for a corporate recruiter specialist and um, a TA coach. Uh, what did I miss? Um, head EA. Um, just visit our careers page. It's athena.breezy.hr. And we're actually right. just winding down. <laughs> yes. So if you're just tuning in, um, you can actually rewind this episode once it ends, just so you can rewatch from start to finish. Again, my name is Marga. I have my lovely host, Pat, and we have our lovely host, lovely, loveliest host, <laughs> lovely, loveliest guest uh, chat, because she has been our guest twice now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and... Uh, thank you very much, Cha. And for everyone who has been inspired by Cha's journey, not just as an applicant, but now as an EA with Athena, um, we would also mm-hmm. like to highlight one of our EA's uh, um, journey here. So shout out to Lei. So she mentioned that she found some of her best friends here in Athena. And uh, I believe this back. In February, we had a general mm. assembly where we flew everyone um, here in Cebu, and uh, for three for three nights, just so we can, um, you know, really bond, really know each other. You know, we we know each other virtually, but it's different mm. when you see them, you know, for the first time in person. And with Lei and her batchmates, they were able to, you know, um, after the after the general assembly they actually had Mm -hmm. dinner together um they were able to have coffee and really talk about and you know um connect uh on a deeper level um as batchmates as friends outside of work so it's really great um to have those connections in athena even if it's not for yourself but for the people Mm -hmm. around you so it's really great uh thanks lay for that comment and again if you're just tuning in you can you can rewatch this episode um and if you have been inspired by lace or by chas uh journey here at athena you can look us up again um we have our careers page down um, at the at the bottom of the screen, and you can please uh, when you search for the EA role, I would encourage you to read the job description thoroughly, and before you click on apply, um, really you know decide for yourself whether this is something that you want for yourself, mm-hmm. you know, long term. Just like Cha mentioned, you're we're building long, you're, we're building this for the long term. Right. Um, it's not just for now. It's not just, you know, because you're bored or because you need money. It's because you want this for yourself. You want this mm-hmm. career um, for yourself. And of course, you'll be rewarded financially um, for <laughs> it. Uh, but that so that shouldn't be the first thing on your mind um, with this with this role. Right. And um, we give updates to the applications. Um day to day so if you haven't received any updates let, let's say for a week now so we don't really process applications during the weekend mostly because we take rests during weekends um so if you apply friday saturday sunday you might get the status update by monday um but we if you haven't received any updates check your spam folder it might have gone straight through there or um, the, the other possibility would be the email might have bounced on our mm-hmm. end because there was a typo in the email that you put in uh, during the application stage. So if you're applying to this role, to any role really, and it applies to um, any company <laughs> that you're interested to apply for, yeah. uh, especially if you're just typing in your email, Take the time to double check, triple check even your email address because it will be the primary um, source for contact when, yeah. you know, the, the companies uh, contact you for the next stage or move you or, you know, even uh, maybe like invite you for an interview. So, again, um, it doesn't really take more than five minutes. To, to double check your email address. So just taking that extra care to make sure that uh, you type in the correct 
email address and that your your email of course the inbox is still accepting um <laughs> is still emails. accepting <laughs> emails right the messages uh, because we we do have applicants who have the correct email address but their inbox <laughs> was so full yes. that it bounced anyway mm -hmm. so um, it, it's really hard for us to contact you that way so again take the time to read the job description decide for yourself if this is something you want for yourself when you apply, make sure that we're, we are able to contact you by mm -hmm. putting in the correct email address. And yes. for each stage of the recruitment process, there's always a you know like a, a minimum passing score, and it's it's not that you know hard to really reach as long as you make sure to read the instructions, um, to really take the time to make sure that um, you you understood correctly. So. There we go. Um, I, I said we were winding down and I just went through <laughs> one monologue. So again, uh, just to uh, close it all out, uh, thank you very much, Cha, for guesting again on our All About Athena episode. Maybe we can have another one on your first anniversary. Yes. <laughs> here at Athena. We'll, yes. we'll make it a very bonga episode um, <laughs> with streamers and party poppers next time around. Yep. So again, <laughs> thank you very much for tuning in. My name is Marga, my co-host Pat, and our guest chat. We thank you for yeah. tuning in to All About Athena. This is our 16th episode. Uh, we will be online again. Uh, we will be live next week. Uh, we are live every Friday at 8 p.m. Make this your Friday habit. Happy Friday and happy weekend. Oh. Happy Bye. weekend, everyone. And thank you. Shout out to Bye. my friends watching. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> if you just see, Bye, come join us at 